Well, hi guys, you're back here with Barry on uh, what will probably be definitely the last immigration video. I know they're not the most interesting, but it is that important a subject to be covering, and uh, I wanted to continue on and uh, on the last video in the series on this. It's a really windy day, so I'm trying to keep a sock around the mic here, but let's go forward. Uh, I do want to mention another couple of ideas for people that will not fall into the qualifications on the residual. There's always, um, don't forget, if there's any special skills that you have, uh, <clears throat> special trades, language skills could also come into play as teachers, uh, things like that. If you have any special skills that cannot be filled as adequately by local people, there is um, a program for that that would allow you to get in on a uh, on a visa. And also, don't forget, there's the traditional work visa that uh, many other countries I've been on them several times in my life, and it's a it's a visa for work. Uh, if you do want to relocate and you can't qualify to the country that you want to permanently relocate. Don't forget there's a, a work visa, and trust me when I'm telling you this, this is from personal experience. All you younger folks out there, uh, things open up when you're in a country after a few years, <clears throat> whether it's a sponsorship, whether it's something that you work out with your boss, or you somehow become uh, an invested owner into that business because uh, he or she likes what you're doing. and and can deal with the foreign and bringing in business and everybody's happy with this and they want to expand it, then you can buy into something like that. And uh, <clears throat> all I'm saying is things change, okay? So don't, again, get away from the black-white scenario. It's always various shades of gray. But uh, <clears throat> I'm going to be scrolling in a price sheet across this video also. Leanne will splice that in when she's doing the editing. Uh, about, I've sampled four or five different prices to save you guys a bunch of time. And we're going to be scrolling the, uh, what was somewhere in the middle range, uh, upper two thirds, I guess, of the range in terms of prices. They don't vary tremendously. <clears throat> However, there is something that you should be aware of. From what I can tell, my own personal experience, experience uh, of others, on a residency, plan on spending anywhere in total between four to six thousand U.S. dollars. Now, if that comes as a shock, let me break it down to you, because while immigration runs around twenty-one hundred dollars or whatever, you're going to require, if you meet the credentials to get in, you're going to be required to take two different trips to the Dominican Republic. The first trip will be for <clears throat> your medical exam, which has to be done in this country. It's testing for contagious disease, hepatitis, uh, drugs in your bloodstream, and your, they do a urine test, a chest x-ray. It's a simple medical procedure. However, I, while I don't agree with it, but it does have to be done in this country. That requires one set of return tickets. Now, depending on where you live, if you live in Florida, yeah, that can be about, you know, $300. If you live somewhere else, that ticket could easily be a $1,000 return. Then you'll need at least two days in Santo Domingo. <clears throat> I've scouted around several areas, um, and I'd be glad to forward anybody hotels or whatever, but for a nice, clean hotel in a better area, plan on starting $50 a night on up. You can go up to the uh, ritziest places and drop three, four hundred if that's in your budget, but plan on about 50 US dollars on up. And again, I'm not saying there isn't cheaper places. I'm talking a nice place, clean, safe, secure, in a nice area that you can go out at night and not really worry too much where you are. Okay, Santo Domingo is four and a half million people. This is a big city. <clears throat> You will need two of those trips, so you got to factor that in. So while I'm averaging it out, I don't think I'm off by too much when I say plan on anywhere from four to six thousand dollars. Now, also plan on the renewals every year. That would cost anywhere from around fifteen hundred dollars. So you're getting 
what I hope is a much better understanding of A, is it for everyone? B, can I do without it and still do what I want to do in the country? C, a very good unbiased idea of what it's really going to cost you to do this. So that's why I was saying a lot of people that want to come for a year or two, even three, may not pay you to do it when you look at the exit penalties or just extending your tourist visa. It is far cheaper. There's no question about it. So um, I'm just checking quickly over my notes here. Uh, I did inform you of there's two, uh, you know, two more ways that you might be able to. We'll scroll the prices. Um, if you want, go on any website or go on the government's website or any immigration website. You'll get a list of the paperwork that's required on your end of it because these the immigration attorneys they put together the file, they coordinate everything. But you're you have to do the legwork for all the forms that you need, as well as all the forms that need what's called apostille. It's very similar to a notary, but only it's for international documents. Uh, another thing you will have to do is, uh, all you folks from uh, countries uh, predominantly French or English, you, these things will have to be translated into Spanish, and uh, translated, I believe, at a consulate, but I could be wrong on the part about the consulate. I am not wrong about they will need to be translated. Uh, many of you are going to fall into the area too where you have the old style birth certificate. Well, there's a new style birth certificate, a long form. They only accept the long form once it's translated into Spanish. So um, there, there's about 10 or 12 documents that you need. Um, <clears throat> most of them are not hard or uh, difficult to obtain. It is time consuming though. So, with that in mind, um, I pretty much feel I've given you a good perspective of what's involved if you decide to go in and choose immigration. And um, we're going to be moving forward in other areas. Right now we're working with some great families building their homes while they're living in other countries. Uh, we're going to do one or two videos with them as they've come in to visit and check the progress to get their views on how it's done and can it be done, is it working for them. Uh, a lot more people coming down to see us when something feels wrong. And in the meantime, um, we really hope that this gave you guys a, a basic, acute understanding of what's involved in immigration. It's not to favor one company over another. Do your own research. Do your own due diligence. But I suppose, um, above all, understand that it's expensive and understand is it right for you. Okay? So we hope you got something out of this, and until next time, this is Barry and DR. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.